This is Chris, the Idaho Painter here on Paint Live TV. Today we're going to be talking about when to use spackle versus when to use Bondo glazing putty. I get questions all the time. You know, when to use one or the other. And there are times and places for both of them. We've got some cabinets we're refinishing here with uh, large knots. It's knotty alder on the back sides. It's never been filled. So which one would you use and why? We're going to talk about that in this video. So stay tuned. All right, here we are. We've got um, multiple doors right here that we're working on a cabinet uh, repaint, refinish. And the front sides of these doors, they were uh, refinished. The knots were already filled, but the back sides, they were never filled. And I think it's, you know, a professional to film on both sides. Now, we've got uh, large holes. We've got small nicks and dings. You know, when would you use and what would you use where? So when we're filling a large hole like this, Spackle is great for filling large holes because spackle doesn't shrink very much. Spackle is softer than uh, glazing putty, so there is a difference uh, to when you want to use them. But if I was to try to fill this hole with Bondo glazing putty, it's probably, it shrinks a lot. So it's probably going to take at least three coats to fill this hole. So I don't want to sit there and wait around and fill sand, fill sand. So I'm going to start off by backing it with Crawford interior exterior spackle. I really do like Crawford's interior exterior spackle for um, doing my initial fill. It's a great product. It dries really hard. It sands really fast. But large stuff like this, one coat, one coat of spackle is what we're going to be doing. I'm going to trowel it on there, those big holes, and put a nice heavy coat of it on there so it actually fills them and we have something to sand. Now there is smaller holes on here that I don't want to fill with spackle and why is that? Spackle is a lot softer than Bondo glazing putty so these type of small holes it'll be easy for your sander to pull that out of there and not get a ultra flat finish. So we want to take small nicks, dings, holes, seams, stuff like that. We're going to use Bondo glazing putty to do the filling on there. It's going to put a dab of Bondo glazing putty on you know, a piece of cardboard. Anything could be a stir stick, a piece of wood. Um, I like this cardboard right here because it's coated on the one side. It doesn't cause the Bondo to um, dry out so fast. Now I'm going to just begin filling my holes, cracks, seams with Bondo glazing putty. And then we'll let that dry. It's probably going to take about 30 minutes for both of these to dry. We'll sand it. And then our uh, spackled holes will be needed to be backed with one coat of Bondo glazing putty. And that's going to give you an amazing flat finish. We're after the ultra flat factory finish on this wood. So you've got to fill all this stuff that we see. I'm using an inspection light right here. One of the great things about an inspection light is it shows you all these nicks and dings with the naked eye. If you didn't have an inspection light, a lot of this stuff you're not even going to be able to see. You can get these inspection lights. We do have them on Paint Life Supply Co. And you um, can take and mount it on a table. You can, I got it mounted on a one by three piece of trim right there so I can move it around. The inspection light does tilt angles up and down to cast the light just the way you want it. But I even got where my hinges left indentations going to want to fill all that stuff. So there it is. The difference between using spackle, which is softer, Bondo, glazing putty, which is harder. Don't confuse this with Bondo itself. This is Bondo glazing putty, which is what goes over the top of Bondo if you're filling and doing large holes or large dents on automobiles. Bondo glazing putty is absolutely amazing. You can use it to get rid of brush strokes. Um, you could skim it over a door if there was brush strokes, stipple marks, uh, microscopic nicks and dings, seams, stuff like that. Absolutely amazing. So you got to have both of them if you're doing the professional looking amazing cabinet finishes. If you got any tips or tricks, you know, that you use when it comes to finishing cabinets, just leave it down in the comment section below. Don't forget, if you enjoy our videos, give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate that. It keeps encouraging us to keep making these videos to help you guys out, you know, in creating the ultimate cabinet finish like a pro. And like we always say, we'll see you next time right here on Paint Life TV. Ow.